Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The reason I start with that greeting is because we're still in the season of Easter. This is a whole season of 50 days that begins with the celebration of Jesus' resurrection to life again and culminates with the coming of the Spirit upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost, which is uh, quite literally means the 50th day. We often think about Easter as uh, a celebration of the end of death, the victory over death. And I suppose that's one way of thinking about it, one way of, of considering what Easter is, and it truly is something to celebrate. But what we're more fundamentally celebrating is God's mighty acts, and more importantly, God's insatiable desire for life to flourish. As, John, uh, as Jesus says in John chapter 10, I came that they may have life, and they may have it abundantly. And that's what God really is about, having this, this abundant life. And so Easter is about celebrating that uh, the, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, that, that same God is out to ensure that life happens, that life flourishes, that life is abundant. And so... We celebrate God and that one in whom we live and move and have our being, our purpose, our life force, the very cause of our existence. So you've heard me talk before about how the Gospel of John of the four is, is one of my favorites for different reasons. Uh, but one of the things that I really like about the Gospel of John is that it's de deceptively simple. At face value, at least, it's deceptively simple. Uh, at face value, John's gospel is an account of Jesus' life, ministry, uh, and, and, and all that goes on around that, and it culminates, of course, in his crucifixion and his resurrection. But when we even take like a half step closer to the text of John's gospel, we find a cornucopia of complexity, a complexity that, that mirrors the complexity of our own lives. On the surface, the day-to-day -day of, of life may not seem all that remarkable to many of us, but when we take time to step back and, and look at everything, take a wider view of it, uh, everything that goes on, something as simple as a blade of grass, and we look at that, we're amazed at, at God's inventiveness, and we marvel at life to say nothing of our own bodies, what with their own complexity and, and the diversity of humanity. And so, as we look at John's Gospel, we see that Jesus performs a series of, of seven signs, beginning with turning water uh, into wine at the wedding of, of Cana in Galilee, and ending with the, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, uh, in Bethany across from uh, Jerusalem. Now each of these seven signs corresponds to one of the seven days of the week in God's original creation story as recounted to us in Genesis. And also each of these signs tells us something about the greatest sign that Jesus will perform, his resurrection to life again on the first day of a new week. What John is telling us is that in Jesus, the word made flesh who lived among us through whom all things came into being, and without whom not one thing came into being, this same Jesus is recreating, renewing life, and restoring order, the order of creation that God first designed. Let us not also forget that by his very name, Jesus tells us what he's about. Jesus' very name says to us, God saves, God renews, God Heals. In Jesus, we live in a new creation, at harmony with itself. Us with one another, our family, our friends, our strangers, even, even 
our enemies as we know Jesus suffered on the cross for all of humanity for his for his enemies as well forgive them father for they know not what they do we're in harmony with all that exists the heavens and the earth swarms of living creatures on the dry land birds that fly across the dome of the sky and the sea teeming with creatures all living things both large and small that is what God is recreating in Jesus. God's recreation in Jesus, which lest we forget, like the first creation takes place in a garden, uh, it doesn't simply end with Jesus rising up to life again, at least not the first day. And the night of the first day of the new week, Jesus appears to the disciples and says to them, Peace be with you. Now, this is an interesting, fascinating occurrence. In good Lutheran fashion, let's ask ourselves, what does this mean? This statement, Peace be with you, is not just happenstance. Jesus breathed his spirit upon them, the disciples. He breathed his spirit upon the disciples, the spirit of new life, and said, Peace be with you. In the same way that the Spirit of God hovered over the waters before the beginning of time and brought calm out of chaos, God once more, through the Word made flesh, the Word made flesh, and the Spirit of life breathes and speaks peace into the chaos of our lives. Now, this isn't a peace that is simply a matter of a, of a state of mind, of contemplation, of being uh, comfortable and at ease here in our, in our psychological well-being. It's a, it's a peace that's all-encompassing. It's the, the, the notion of shalom. The Jewish notion of shalom. It stretches from the tiniest blade of grass to the highest heavens. It reaches to the, the deepest trenches of the oceans, to the farthest reaches of the galaxies that we have yet to even consider. And it touches us in the very core of our beings, in the depths of our be beings where the spirit of God's life meets the flesh and bone of our created bodies and gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. This peace is the knowledge and assurance of God's love, a love that promises never to abandon or forsaken us. Though the chaos of life may rage around us, though we may feel frightened or confused or defeated like those disciples on the first day of a new week, God breaks into our midst and gives us peace. God is with us, particularly now. See, he is doing a new thing, and even now, it springs forth. Would you pray with me? Faithful God, you sent your incarnate word as the sun of righteousness to shine upon all the world. Open our eyes to see your mighty acts and your gracious hands in all of your works that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn your peace and serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you today and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>